and welcome back to my channel Sharks for Life. Today we'll be talking about turtles, sea turtles to be exact. Many people don't know the difference between a sea turtle and a tortoise. Tortoises have feet with claws, a dome-like back, and can seek shelter inside their shell. Sea turtles have flippers, a hydrodynamic back or smooth, and cannot retreat back into their shell. There are only seven types of sea turtles worldwide. Let's talk about each one. The green sea turtle can grow up to be about 60 inches, eats sea grasses, unlike all other sea turtles, and hangs around in all the warm oceans. The green sea turtle gets its name because of the color of a layer of fat far beneath its skin, not the color of its shell. The hawksbill grows up to be about 50 inches, eats sponges, jellyfish, clams, and prawns, and mainly lives in all tropical oceans. It gets its name because the jaws of the hawksbill looks like the beak of, well, a hawk. The loggerhead sea turtle can grow to be about 80 inches, eats shellfish and other marine animals, and loves to be in shallow, warm oceans. They get their name because of the size of their head which is disproportionately big for its body size. The leatherback sea turtle is actually the biggest sea turtle in the world. It grows up to be about 120 inches. It mainly eats jellyfish and lives in all the warm and temperate oceans. Its name refers to the texture of its shell. It's not hard like the other sea turtles, but kind of leathery and flexible so that it can dive down deeper and not crack its shell under the water pressure. The Kemp's Ridley sea turtle grows to be around 35 inches. It's crabs, clams, and jellyfish. They like the waters of the northwestern Atlantic. They get their name from the fisherman who discovered it, Richard Kemp. The olive ridley sea turtle is the smallest of all sea turtles and has a heart-shaped shell that turns an olive green color once it gets older. It only grows to be about 30 inches, eats fish, jellyfish, clams, and prawns, and likes to be mainly in the Indian and Pacific Ocean. Our last turtle, the flatback sea turtle, can grow to be about 40 inches and lives in tropical Australian waters. It mainly eats jellyfish, clams, prawns, and seagrass. They get their name because their shells are flatter than the other sea turtles. Did you know that sea turtles can live anywhere from 50 to 100 years old? Sea turtles start out their lives in an egg. Once they break out of their shell and survive long enough to get to the open ocean, they will spend those first months in sargassum seaweed clusters. You know that seaweed that sometimes scares you when it brushes up against your leg while you're swimming? The one that looks a bit weird. That's sargassum. To us, it may be gross, but to the baby sea turtles, it's super yummy and their main food source and shelter for the first part of their lives. Once they are fully matured, the adult females will go back to the same beach in which they were born and lay their eggs. The mother turtle will then leave the nest and will not see her babies ever again. For the turtles to know which beach to return to 20 to 50 years later, they have to take in every little detail. From the moment the babies hatch to the moment they reach the ocean, the turtles are gathering information while crawling, such as the temperature of the air to the texture of the sand. They remember these features so they are able to come back. This is why it is very important that if you see a baby sea turtle hatching, please leave it alone and keep a good distance between yourself and the turtles. If you see them at night, turn off any flashlights and phone screens. Please do not videotape them. This is because the babies normally go for the brightest light on the horizon, which would normally be the moon. And if you have lights on, they will get disoriented and may not be able to get to the ocean in time. Some beach and coastal homes have turtle friendly lights to not harm the hatchlings. Did you know that sadly only 1 in 1,000 hatchlings will survive to become adults? This is why it is crucial that you leave them alone. Do not touch, disturb, or get really close to baby sea turtles. They are wild animals and deserve a right to live a happy, free life. Out of the 7 sea turtle species, 5 can be found here in South Florida, and out of those 5, 3 nest on our beaches. The Broward County Sea Turtle Conservation Program is an incredible team of experts that help count sea turtle nests. Every morning during March through October, they get on some dune buggies and ride along the beaches of Broward County to find any new sea turtle nests. Every coastal county in Florida has their own sea turtle conservation program. A few months ago, I had the amazing opportunity to go out with the sea turtle patrol, as I like to call them, one early morning to look for new nests. 
The sea turtles that most nest on South Florida beaches are the loggerhead, the green, and the leatherback. Last year, we broke the record for the most amount of nests. When they find a sea turtle nest, the sea turtle patrol team can identify the type of turtle because of the crawl prints left. They tape the area around the nest to protect it from people and estimate a hatching date. They also find nests which hatch during the night, but sadly, sometimes a few babies don't make it to the ocean. That's nature. However, when they look at the nest, sometimes a few babies are still alive and well. Those are taken to a local sea turtle hospital to be taken care of and released the following night. A sea turtle hatching release is an amazing experience. Try to attend one. You will not regret it. The director of this amazing team is Dr. Derek Burkholder. He is also a researcher at Nova Southeastern University and the director of the Meek, which I will talk about later. I got the chance to ask him a few questions about sea turtles. Let's see what he said. Uh, sea turtles are amazing animals. You know, there's a lot of... Um, they play a big role in, in sort of helping to balance our ecosystems. And so uh, one of the things I really like about turtles, sea turtles in particular, is that... Um, you know, a lot of people love the ocean, but maybe can't always get out on a boat or things like that. And so sea turtles are a great way um, to bring marine life to shore because they come up and lay their nests on the beach. And so it's a great way that even if you're not out there on a boat, snorkeling, diving or something like that, that you can actually see um, a, mar a marine animal, even if it's coming up just for a little while to lay its nest. But it is a great way to kind of merge those two worlds a little bit, which I think is pretty cool. All right, good question. So it depends a little bit on the species of sea turtle. Um, so the this part of the world, the Northwest Atlantic population is the largest loggerhead population in the world. We've got the most loggerheads here than anywhere else. Um, and Florida actually has 90% of the nesting of this loggerhead population. So we get a lot of it, uh, but loggerhead, or sorry, sea turtles in general will nest throughout the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, Bahamas, um, all around Florida, and then even up the coast, up into the Carolinas, and maybe a little bit further north. But, but Florida is a big, big, big part of that nesting beach for a lot of those species. Mm -hmm. Sea turtles are endangered for a lot of reasons. Uh, one of the, you know, most of them are because of us in one way or another. Um, so one of the big reasons that they declined so much initially was we used to hunt them. We used to eat them. Um, they made a great food source for people coming over on ships because they could catch these turtles. They could keep them on deck for, you know, sometimes weeks or months at a time so they could always have some fresh meat. So it, it you know, we, we hunted them out primarily, but also uh, we catch them accidentally quite often. So in um, for many years, things like the trawl fisheries, where we drag a great big net behind a boat, um, sea turtles breathe air at the surface. And so if they get stuck in that net, they might not be able to get up to take a breath. Um, with putting in things like turtle excluder devices, which is a tool that was developed that we mount, that, that people mount in that nest, or sorry, in the the trawl net, um, it can actually help sea turtles because they'll hit a grate and be kicked out of the nest where they won't get stuck. So that's really decreased that capture, but they still get caught on, you know, rod and reel. They get caught on some of the long line fisheries. They get tangled in debris a lot of times. So lines and buoys and fishing line and things like that are a huge problem for turtles and other marine life. And then pollution as well. A lot of, you know, they're eating plastics and all these things in the ocean that, um, aren't doing very well for them. Thank you so much, Dr. Burke Holder. If you'd like to know more about turtles, check out the Marine Environmental Education Center or the Meek. I've been volunteering there since I was in fifth grade. There, I keep up the facility clean while learning so much about turtles and other marine life. They have a green sea turtle named Captain there. She is so cute. If you're not able to go, check out their social media. Meek also has very interesting information and webinars available. Amy Hupp was Captain's caretaker for many years. She'll tell us her story in the next video. Captain is our resident green sea turtle. Um, she is a permanently injured turtle. She, back in 2010, she was hit by a boat, and so she has uh, buoyancy issues. It's a, a result of that injury, um, as well as some partial paralysis in her rear flippers. Uh, so she needs extra care, and so we provide that extra care for her at the Meek. Uh, so, 
She was originally found up in uh, the Mayport Naval Basin, so up in Jacksonville, Florida area. Um, and initially she was taken to the Georgia Sea Turtle Center for her immediate rehab. So um, ultimately when turtles are stranded and they're or injured, um, they um, we want to take them to a hospital so they can get better and, and hopefully we can release them. And so that was our goal with Captain. Um, we took her um, into rehab. Um, it did take a while for her wound to heal, so she did actually have a wound from that boat strike injury. Um, but that has since healed and you can't see that anymore. Unfortunately, what happens is this secondary issue, the floating, and that's what causes uh, turtles to have to stay um, or find a permanent home. And so, um, Captain, um, after going through rehab for several years, we tried releasing her once, um, and unfortunately it didn't work out. We released her and then we found her floating again three weeks later. Um, and so then we brought her back into captive care. Uh, veterinarians um, kind of reassessed her. We tested her in some deeper water um, and really realized that she wasn't able to dive without that weight on. So uh, the weight that Captain has on her shell um, is what she needs the care for. So sometimes it does fall off, like we saw today or yesterday technically. We put it back on today. Um, and then um, sometimes we have to adjust the amount of weight on it. So. Um, so now, so after she was at the Georgia Sea Journal Center, she was taken over to Moat Marine Lab, um, and then we got her after that. So now she is here permanently in Hollywood, Florida, uh, at the Meek. Thank you, Amy. Meek has three more resident turtles who are much smaller than Captain. Stella's a Florida box turtle and she got bit by a dog. Meek took her into intensive care to help her recover and is now a proud resident at the Meek. Cashew came to Meek inside a container of mixed nuts. Cashew is a red ear slider and is considered non-native, meaning they are not from Florida. This means that Cashew cannot be released into the wild. Clem is a diamondback terrapin who was found floating upside down in a canal and became a resident at Meek. We actually don't know if Clem is male or female. We also don't know this with Cashew. If Clem turns out to be a female, we might name her Clementine. I hope you learned a little about sea turtles today and how to protect them. Did you know that you can adopt a sea turtle nest? No, you don't get to take it home with you, but when you adopt a nest, you will be sent a certificate of adoption and pictures of when the baby sea turtles hatch from your nest. Local Girl Scout troops have adopted sea turtle nests. You can do it too and help save the sea turtles. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, share it with your friends, and if you have any questions, please write a comment below. Remember to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for future videos. Thank you!